Hi friends, it's Gwen. This is the second part to my December haul. I do not know if I'm melding them together yet or doing them separately. I hope I haven't rambled on too much. I'm not going into super depth about what these books are about, plus I'm horrible at giving synopsises, so I'm trying to read the inside flap or the back cover of the book to give you a little bit of an idea. Just like the first haul, these books came from a multitude of sources, so I'm going to try to remember to tell you where I got the books, and let's get started. The first book that I picked up was another one that I got at a super discounted rate, thanks to Barnes & Noble always having the 30% off coupons in the month of December, and I finally picked up We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Um, I did mention this on someone, like I commented in someone's video about, you know, books that I was looking forward to or books that I wanted, and this was one of them, and they were like, oh my gosh, you have to get it, so I got it. The next book I also got, I actually got this one at Target because it still has a sticker on it. I can tell that. So when I was shopping for Christmas presents in Target, oops, actually it was a birthday present. I'm going to be honest. I was meeting my sorority sister to pick up my Christmas presents. Um, and then I went to Target and I got a belt for Daniel for Christmas. And I went to the book section and I fell down and oops, this fell onto my basket and I bought it. So that is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Hahn. Um, this is going to be the first book that I've read by her. Yes, she read, she wrote um, The Summer I Turned Pretty. I've heard great, great things about this book. I know I'm behind on my reading, but I finally have it at least, so that's good. The next books I got at my local library book sale and a couple of them I don't really plan on reading and then a couple of them I do and I will explain. During the Christmas holiday I was looking up kind of bookish ornaments, bookish decorations, and I came across the finished stars and they weren't really, the ones that I saw were not made out of books but book pages. Um, but I decided to make some out of book pages and cutting up a book is like ah, the death of me. So what I did is I took one of my old paperback versions of a Patricia Cornwell that I had for like ages and ages and the spine was all messed up and I actually have it. Hold on a second. So the one that I used was actually um, this paperback version, Patricia Cornwell's Book of the Dead, and I actually have it in hardback, so I didn't feel as bad. Um, as you can see, it goes directly from chapter 6 to chapter 8, and it's got a big missing place in it because I ripped those pages out. But the spine is a mess, and I didn't think that anybody would really... I mean, there are a million of these at the library book sales, and I've seen them everywhere, so I just ripped these out, and I made some finished stars. And I'll actually, I'll try to insert a picture here I did post it on my Instagram and I think it went to my Twitter as well um, but yeah that was a lot of fun I made two of those and I plan to make a bunch more that's why I'm still hanging on to this book and it was really easy and fun but another idea that I saw was where you could take old book pages and make a huge wreath and I was just in love with that idea and I really wanted to do it but you kind of needed a bigger book to do it you know to be more successful with it and I could not find a book in my house that I wanted to destroy for that so when I went to the library book sale my goal was to find a book that I would not mind cutting all the pages out and making this wreath with because I feel like it would make an awesome decoration above my bookshelf and then like when we move and we do our little library I thought it would just be an awesome decoration to keep around and display around my bookshelves the first book that I found actually was this one and I just picked it up because of the size of the book. I have no idea what it was about. Um, and I started flipping through and it had large italicized font and I was like, oh my goodness, this is perfect for the project because the pages are, you know, nice size, the font's great, and I have no interest in reading this. But then as I was looking through it, I started to become interested. It has... Oh, is that like non-PG? Maybe I should. There you go. <laughs> um, so I started flipping through this book and it just looks so interesting. I just, I was like, oh no, now I don't know. 
if I could use this to cut it up. But I thought like if I started reading it, I couldn't read it, like it would be really awesome to include some of these graphics within the wreath. And it has maps and I mean, I'm just pretty much fascinated by this book. Again, don't know if I can actually cut it up now. I might have to try to read it first. Then I was like, oh, I need to find another book. So I went to the foreign language area and I picked up this book. It is very old, as you can see. Um, I don't know how to say any of this. I think it's in German, um, but the pages are very old. And as I was flipping through this, I noticed, see, I mean, the spine is totally broken. It's broken and coming unglued and chunks are falling out, but the pages are beautifully aged and it's all in a different language. So I wouldn't feel bad because I can't read this at all. Like I literally can't read this, um, but it is a pretty book. And, but one thing then of course, being the book lover I am, I saw that it had some, it's, this one fell out, but it has some pictures, but what's cool about it, and I don't know if I'll be able to show you because I'm going to take forever to show you, but it will have one picture. I mean, they have beautiful um, so I could take those out. I was actually thinking of like taking those out and framing those and then just using like the regular pages for the book. But here's one example. And then there, somewhere else in the book is like the opposite view of that. Okay, well I can't find it, but it has some awesome little plate prints in there. And so I thought I could use those as artwork, like get, you know, take them out and frame those and then use the pages to make the wreath. So that's what the plan is for this book. We shall see if it actually happens. And my sorority sister, she has such a good eye. We're looking through for Patricia, Patricia Cornwell books and she spots, wait for it, wait for it. That's right, I got this book for a dollar, Gone, Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. I've been wanting to read this book forever. The movie is out. I have not watched the movie. My sorority sister um, has already watched the movie and read the book. I got this book for a dollar, you guys. I'm so pumped and it is in great condition. Paperback version, dust jacket, no huge damage at all. Pages in perfect condition, non-yellowed, no spills. Like, I don't even know how this book ended up at the library book sale, but I am super pumped. And it is very high on my TBR because I would like to watch the movie, but I want to read the book first. Then the next two books I got at a bargain priced place and I just picked them up purely based on the covers and the author. So the first one I got is The First Husband and it's a novel by Laura Dave and the cover, how cute is this cover? I can't even get over it. It's so cute. And I have no idea what it's about. Annie Adams thinks she has it all. Her longtime boyfriend, Nick, is on the verge of becoming a successful film director. Her travel column is nationally syndicated and they've got a great dog. Her life finally feels like it is falling into place until, out of nowhere, Nick announces that he's reconnected with a woman from his past and he's moving out. Dun, dun, dun. So, wow, that looks really good. Sounds really good. Now, the last book that I picked up at a bargain price store is Lauren Conrad's Sweet Little Lies. And I do, I did haul another one that I have on my bookshelf somewhere. Um, so I figured, okay, it was really cheap. I, I got this for a dollar as well. Um, and yeah, so, and it's another short one. So, okay, I'll do it for a buck. 
first book out of this group my parents gave me for Christmas. My mom got me the untold stories of 33 men buried in a Chilean mine and the miracle that set them free by Hector Torbar and she had no idea what to get me and she heard this book was really good and it's obviously based on a true story and it is the hardback version. I'm very grateful for this because I don't read a lot of, you know, true story type books. So this will be very good to add to my collection for 2015. When I was visiting my parents, I really wanted to check out some of the local bookstores. So I was just looking online and I came across one that I had to go to and I did talk about it or I did vlog it in my one of my vlogs I think it was like on the 27th vlog 27th I think it was the 27th but it was super awesome and that bookstore is called the book thing and it is basically a free bookstore and it is huge in my head I was thinking it was gonna be like one or two maybe two rooms a couple of shelves with a couple of books no this bookstore is gigantic people gigantic and you can check out as many books as you want I mean not even check out you can take as many books as you want I am amazed at this concept there are I, I posted um, on my Google Plus I posted like a little video and I'm also and I linked it on my vlog I'm gonna link it down in this video check out this YouTube video about this place it is amazing the concept is amazing I know I keep saying amazing but I was just shocked that this was actually working and then when I went there it was as great as it sounded huge selection um, it wasn't perfectly like organized, like not like you walk into a Barnes and Noble or you know another bookstore, but you walk in and it's you know the front room was like the children's books are here, theater books are here, foreign language books are here, educational books are here. They had magazines, they had records, they had VHS, they had it all. You go back, there's fiction and nonfiction and then they had Russell recommends because he's the guy that kind of started it all and all of his like books that he really liked go in that section they had you know true crime mystery they had um, a computer section they had I mean it was just amazing and they're only open on the weekend Saturday and Sunday pretty much all day and when I went there were people with like boxes and bags and like it was just and they had like a whole bunch of like a stack like a mountain of boxes that you could just take and put your books in because obviously I wasn't expecting to go to a free bookstore so I didn't bring like a book or a bag a book bag or a bag or anything um but it was amazing and like I said you could check out as many books as you want all they ask you to hey sorry about that that is the first time my camera has died. <sighs> so I guess I've been rambling on. So let me finish up. So this is the little thing that I got there. Um, it's free books. It's at 3001 Vineyard Lane off of Greenmount between 30th and 31st. Every Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Book Thing of Baltimore, Inc. They have a website down below, and that is www.bookthing.org donate your unwanted books and their mission which I loved was our mission is to put unwanted books into the hands of those who want them and if you watch the video below please 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 watch it and if you're in the Baltimore area or you're ever traveling through etc I urge you to stop by um, it is a great concept and one that really touched me and I'm kind of going to be doing something along those lines because I would love to start one in my area. That's a video for another day. But take as many books as you want, however you can get them out of the store. And then at the very end, there's a sign sheet that you sign, you write your name. Um, if you're like from a company or something like that, you put that there. And then how many books you took out 
took with you and then a comment or something like that and I think they're just doing it to see like how many books are people taking how many are coming in how many are going out and like I said you can drop off books there and they'll take them it's you know a great concept I can't talk about it enough I love the book thing I only got a few books there actually which is kind of strange I think it's because my you know my mom and my dad and my fiance were there and I felt kind of like oh. but I probably could have got like a hundred more books but it is so huge it wasn't just like one room you really need to like comb through it like I could probably take a few hours there I probably could have done like maybe an hour a room just because there are so many books. And I'll insert a little clip here. store I picked up again I was trying to think of my crafts that I've been wanting to do the finished stars and um, the wreath thing and other bookish type crafts so I got two more foreign language books and I think they are so funny um, these are um, Japanese um, anime well Japanese books it was in the foreign language section but this is the cover which I think is so cute. I have no idea what it says. And then inside it has the stamps from Japan. And then a book thing, what they do is they have a stamp and they put it inside and it has the little recycle symbol and it says, not for resale, this is a free book www.thebookthing.org and it's stamped on the cover but I mean it's not a great condition or anything but I plan to just kind of tear it up anyway and it's all in Japanese so it's not like I can read it anyway but it does have these cute little oh and things keep falling out of it like sorry oh this is like I guess like a little sticker so anyway I have no idea what that says um, one of my aunts is actually from Japan. I should probably just like say, hey, what is this book and what is it, you know, what is it? Because um, I have no idea. Then I picked up another one that was also Japanese and I picked up this one because it was a um, comic and I have no idea what it's about and it's so cute and little. So... When Oh, also, when I was getting these books, I was thinking of Stikachino because she lives in Japan. So that was kind of funny. And then I was trying to explain to my parents that I, knew so that I knew someone from Japan, and they were like, who? And I was like, oh, yeah, Aunt Mommy. She's from Japan, right? <laughs> Not Sabrina, the girl that I know from BookTube, but whatever. I thought that was funny. So shout out to Sabrina. Woo -woo. But anyway, um, this is... Sorry is as you can see it's kind of like a graphic book so and of course I have no idea no idea because it's all in Japanese so I have I literally have no idea um, what it says but I figure I could use it for one of my bookish crafts and it was free I mean free free like why would you not Next book I got is Sarah's Key. I've been wanting to get this book. I saw it in Barnes & Noble several times and I never picked it up, but now I got it for free. It is the paperback version. Oh, and that was so cool. I forgot about that. It, it like, I didn't even know this. So I got this at the, um, at the bookstore. I picked it up and then I got home. Oh, I got back to my parents' house and I was like flipping through my books, like all excited. And I was like, oh my gosh, free bookmark. So excited about that free bookmark what's up and then I flipped through it further and one of my favorite animals is giraffes and it had this in it oh so I'm so excited and it has a 2014 calendar on it so it's not going to be really great for much longer but it's like a little treasure in my book and I like it so yeah Sarah's key finally got that one for free then I saw this one and the cover just had glitter on it and it sounded like a contemporary. Um, the Love of Her Life, a novel by Harriet Evans. 
and she's the author of Going Home and A Hopeless Romance, and she lives in London. But um, in London, Kate Miller has an exciting job at a fashion magazine, an engagement, and a wedding to plan, then it all fell apart. And so, yeah, so this just sounded like a cute, chick lit, contemporary, you know, kind of book. And the cover was cute. And once again, it was free. Um, the next book that I picked up, I just, I actually passed it by. It was in the shelf, um, Russell Recommends. It's actually like a two sided, huge shelf. But I walked by it because I was taking my fiance to the computer manual section and, sorry, I just hit my leg. But I was taking him to the computer manual section. So as I'm going, I'm like looking and I spotted the spine, which looked like this. And I just passed it by. I went. I was like, oh, that's such an interesting book. So when I came back, I had to find it. And there was a guy, like, standing in that section. And I was like, oh, my God, please let that book still be there because it looked like the spine just drew me in. So I pulled it out. And here is what I found. The Principles of Uncertainty by this author right down here. And the back looks like this. So cool. And then wait for it. Here is the inside. Here is the actual book. What, here, let me just let me just take the dust jacket off. So here is the dust jacket. I once again the spine in the back, and then the inside of the dust jacket. I thought that was pretty cool. And then this is pretty cool. But then, let's admire the beauty of the book. The naked book. It's naked. Shh, don't tell nobody. Shh. How awesome is this book? Okay. And then, oh look, this is the inside. I guess this is like, this looks like moss. Like this is Spanish moss, and then this is like the green fluffy moss that you see. And this is more that ragweedy moss that you see. And then on the back cover, it has more moss. And it's, oh, I just, ooh, I just love it. Oh my gosh, I can't get enough. And, oh. So, Map of the United States is in the back, and I ju I'm just now finding this, people. I'm just now finding this. This book does not stop. It's amazing. Map of the United States by Sarah Berman. Either put it on the wall or put it back into the book. If you put it back in the book, it may one day fall out when someone browses through the book, and it will become a thing that falls out of a book. So, oh, it's like, oh, it's still, like, guys, it's still attached. It's still attached. It's like in the book. It's perforated that I could take it out, but I almost don't want to take it out. <laughs> it is so funny. It's not even like... <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, I'm probably going to leave it in. It's hilarious though. But then I was like, well, what? Okay, so, so far, so good, right? Let's see what the inside looks like. And of course, I've already seen the inside. And let me just tell you, it's awesome. I'm dressing the book. I'm dressing it, I'm dressing it. Okay, it is, it's dressed. Okay. I, I wanna stare at it for a second before I show you. Cause it is just so cool. This is what the book is like. Look. The whole book is like that. How? Let's see if I can turn and flip for you. It probably would have been easier without the dust jacket, but. Can you see this amazingness? It's amazing. It's amazing. Look at it. Oh, 
I am so, like, I'm in love with this book. And it is in perfect condition. And don't forget, I got this book for free, people. Ugh. You need it. You need it in your life. The Principles of Uncertainty. Here's the author's name. And I think that was her picture in the very back. Yes, this is her. So shout out to the awesomeness of this book and author. Ugh. Love, love, love. The last book that I picked up, um, my mom ended up getting a pop-up book. Daniel God, and I found Daniel and Isaac Asimov book. Don't know which one. It's in the back room, and I'm not going to get it. Um, my dad picked up a book, and then on our way out, I went through the children's section, like the little kids section, and they had this. So I had to get it, and it's kind of in bad condition, but I figured I could probably repair it somehow, but... It, again, it was free, so who really cares? It's free. If I decided I didn't want it, well, I could give it away or whatever. But it is Christmas Stories by um, Charles Dickens. It's the Junior Deluxe Edition. Um, it's, as you can see, it has quite a bit of damage right here. But I'm hoping that all I have to do is glue it. I'm gonna glue, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna glue it down. I, I'm not really sure, but I'm probably gonna glue it down and it has the deckled edges and like the pink, probably red, it used to probably be red. Um, it's very aged. But I just, uh, I mean, you could tell, look, it's very aged but I mean how awesome is this that I have like this copy and has color like a color picture um, the Christmas stories a Christmas Carol the chimes the cricket on the hearth and I just Yeah, I don't even know when this was published or how old it is, but I love like old books and it's one that I kind of wanted anyway, especially with it being the Christmas season. So I figured I could just glue it and then maybe, maybe wash it up a little bit because it's got that, you know, hardish thing and it's not like cloth or anything. Just this part is cloth, but this part is like hard. So I figure I might take a magic eraser to it and clean it up a little bit. Um, but this is just going to stay aged and yellowed and yeah, so I got it for free. So, okay. So that's all that I got at the book, the book thing. And again, amazing concept. The last bookstore that we stopped in is called Normals Books and Records. It was also in my vlog and I will insert some pictures and a little clip here. this isn't like a free bookstore or anything like that this is just like a regular bookstore but they have a huge array of books again it's just you just go from room to room to room and there are just books floor to ceiling and it's just oh it's just amazing and they have new books used books and rare books and they have um, of course, records galore, CDs galore, just any type of music and books. They have a lot of indie magazines. They have a lot of um, 
it is just it is a super cool shop like if I lived there I'd want to work there it's I would work there Monday through Friday and then work at the book thing Saturday and Sunday because those two places just blew my mind so excited um, my mom bought me two books from there because I was trying not to spend any money on books but my mom bought me two books and I'm so excited about both of them the first book that she got me was um, this the field guide to the birds by Roger Tory Peterson and she has this exact book and so it's gonna be really cool to kind of be able to look out my window and try to identify the birds um, it would now this is kind of funny so this book is I'm trying to see how old it is. Copyright 1934, 1939, and 1947. So does that mean that this one's from 1947? I don't know. If it is, it is in amazing condition. I mean, totally 90 degree angles, no scuffs. Spine is a little crinkled but not bad at all um it has a lot of you know informational but then it also has a big colored section and black and white section about all the birds um so originally this book on the back it says right here $4.95 so how much do you think I paid for this book or my mom my mom my mom bought this for me four dollars <laughs> I was so surprised that they considered that like a deal even though the book was originally $4.95 but that was probably like back in the 40s or whatever but this is a great this is like my first field guide and my mom like outside my mom and dad's window they have like a bird feeder and we were always watching the birds and we were always spotting like wrens and different woodpeckers and my dad was talking about the robins and stuff like that and we both live on the east coast so this is the eastern land and waters birds but loving this and it's sponsored by the National Audubon Society so yay and it's so cute look at the little puffin and the cardinal and the mysterious bird that I don't know what it is yet so thank you mom I'm gonna hold it in high regard it's not one of those books obviously that I'm gonna read but it's one of those books that I can reference and refer to And it has like the little inches. It has like a little, yeah. And it has a place. My mom probably writes in hers, but I'm probably not gonna do that. But I'm super excited and I'm never gonna get rid of it. So yay. Okay. Last book I got um, was kind of special and I'm really excited about it. It's something I would have never picked up myself. Um, Henry David Thoreau the works of him it's this huge like padded book with gilded gilt golden gilded pages it has a little ribbon um the spine oh so beautiful um it's complete and unabridged and my mother told me that this was that um that walden by henry david thoreau was my grandmother's Bible basically and um, it does have pictures but that is a huge part of the book so that part of the book this one right here that I have my hand on this one is Walden this one so I really need to get to reading it but it does have large font so I'm excited about that, but I've never read anything by him, but this book was in such great condition and she got it for $20 and I'm super excited about reading it because I feel like this will bring me closer to my mom, but it will also bring me closer to my grandmother who is no longer with us. So yay, thank you mom so much for this. It means so much. And that is officially all my books that I got. So that wraps up my haul. I was looking, I did my, I redid my bookshelves. As you can tell, they're kind of in rainbowish order. So it's red, oranges, yellows, greens, blues, um, purples, pinks, grays, and silvers. 
then blacks and whites and then the bottom shelf which you cannot see at all is all these books that I've hauled and I read 42 books in 2014 I'm working on the 43rd but I don't think I'll be able to finish it before the year's out um, but then I was counting how many books that I have and I have around 40 books and then I have all of these books so honestly I probably shouldn't buy one more book this year but it's so hard not to buy books or want books so we'll see what happens I hope everybody is having a great day. I know I am, especially finally being able to share all these books with you. I'm super excited about some of them. Others of them I just got for crafting purposes, so that should be a lot of fun. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me some comments and let me know if you've read any of these books. I'll see you next time. Bye!